Bienvenidos, Usham Deed, and welcome to another Cisco Networking Academy Netacad Introduction to Python course supplemental video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're now going to be making our way to the penultimate function that we're going to be dealing with, and that's going to be part four in lab 4.1.6.13, where we're now going to be checking to see whether or not there is a winner. So we're going to be declaring a couple new variables that we're going to be using. One of them is going to be sign, or I should say human and computer, and then we're going to be passing that in as the sign. If we were to take a look here at the lab, you can see for, whoops, sorry, for victory four, we're passing in as positional arguments, and they'll become positional parameters inside the function, board, which we're very familiar with, but now we have this new one here, sign. And so this function is going to analyze the board status in order to check if the player using O's or X's has won the game. And I thought about reusing, again, that section of code that we've already had a couple times now, which is the nested for loops. But I'm going to attack this in a different way, and I'm going to explain why I'm going about it the way that I am. Now, this is one way to solve it. Of course, if you've watched the previous video, I'll probably, by the time I get done with this, be looking at it and thinking, well, we could do this a different way. So again, this is going to be one way to do it. And here are the requirements for us here. Now, the program checks to see if the game is over. There are four possible verdicts. The game should continue is going to be verdict one. And that means when we go into the victory four function, if there's no winner, then the game continues. Uh, the game could end in a tie. And we're going to be dealing with the tie uh, in a different fashion, or I should say not so much within this function, but in the main or sort of global area of the program, we're going to be creating a new variable called number moves. And so I'm going to be tracking the moves because if the game is a tie, that means that every time we've checked for a winner, there has been no winner. And if there are nine moves, in other words, if the number of moves is equal to nine, then what happens? If we don't have a winner, we've got a tie. Uh, and then uh, you win or the computer wins. And the way that I'm going to deal with that is I think what I'm going to do is probably an if statement to check to see if the sign uh, that we pass in, uh, if it's the human, or I should say if it's a, a capital O or a capital X, is going to dictate whether or not the winner is the computer or the human. In other words, you. So let's talk about how we determine in tic-tac-toe if there's a winner. Well, if all of that row is going to be and this as soon as I'm drawing this out you should start it should start to kind of like become clear to you what we're going to be checking for so if square 1 and square 2 and square 3 are all the same sign either all x's or all o's we've got a winner and the same is true here and the same is true here so there's three possibilities going that direction, going by the rows. And if we look at it in the columns, we've got one, two, three possibilities there. Where if one, four, and seven, or two, five, and eight, or three, six, and nine are all the same sign, either all X's or all O's, we have a winner. And then the final check is this diagonal here, which would be square one, square five, square nine, or square three, square five, square seven. So there are a grand total of, if my math is not failing me here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are a grand total of eight things that we would need to check for, eight combinations I have to check for here to determine whether or not there is a winner. And so this is why I'm shying away from the nested for loops 
because the nested for loops are going through, they'll do 0, 1, 0, 2, and then 0, 3, but then once those for loops, or once that first iteration finishes, it'll check uh, 1, 0, or I'm sorry, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and then 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, but to check the column, so we can check the rows, right? And that'll get us through all nine squares, but it's not going to do the columns for me. In other words, the nested for loops would not produce the combination I need for one and four and seven after I check the rows, right? So it's a little more difficult to get it to do that. So my solution, which is kind of how I've verbalized it here is going to be how I attack this function here. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into the integrated development learning environment. Again, picking up right where we left off. The only change I made was I brought the board down here because I'm going to manipulate the board because we can check to see whether or not we have a victory. So the first thing I talked about, I had mentioned this number of moves, right? Well, remember, we start with one move here, uh, the computer. Every time the game starts, the number of moves is going to be one. That's where we're going to start. And so I'm going to say number, and we'll actually go of moves. And again, I'm going to come back to why I'm using this and how this is going to be used as we move on. Uh, and I'm going to put all of this, well, not all of it, but down below all of the fun function invocations. We're going to be wrapping this up in, a, in the final video into a while loop, right? Because if the game is a tie, then that's it. Or if we have a winner, then that's it. So let's go ahead and we've got the number of moves set up. Uh, now let's set up the arguments, whoops, sorry, the arguments that we'll be passing in as parameters here referred to as sign. And again, the signs would be either the human, and the human would be the capital O, or the computer, and the computer is going to be the capital X. And that's the sign that they use. And so that is how we're going to cycle through the victory for function to determine whether or not we have a winner. Now, it should be pretty clear. And in fact, if I was to slide back up here, this is how we're going to be doing those checks, right? So if board 00, zero and 0, 01 and 0, 02 are all equal to the same sign, we've got a winner. If 101112, a winner. 202122, a winner. And then you can figure out the different combinations just by looking at the code that we have here. And so here's how I'm going to work my way through here. So I'm going to say if board, and I'll be able to save us some time with some fancy cut and paste action. So we'll say if the board uh, 0, 0. So if that element in that array is equal to the sign and board 0, 1. And so again, I'm dealing with this in terms of the first row is equal to the sign and board Oops, sorry, bring that back. 0, 2 is equal to the sign. Oops, sorry, equal to the sign. Let's double check, make sure I spelled that right. So if that's the case, then we have a winner, right? Now, I could print something up here saying we've got a winner, and then I could return some sort of a value out of this, and we'll probably come back to that. For right now, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll drop a print statement in here. Uh, and we can say something along the lines of player sign, oops, sorry, bring this back, uh, player sign, and we'll say um, is your winner. All right. Now, you might be thinking, well, this is going to take a long time to have to type all this out. Well, remember, this is one of the great things about idle, is I can just simply come in here, and I'm going to copy this, and we know we have row one, whoops, and I didn't want that. Let's get back up to here, where we should be is there. So there's row two, 
Ah, and it actually dropped it back. Did not want it to do that. We'll be changing those to, sorry, we'll be changing that to LF here in a second. So then there's row three, and we'll pull this back. And then we're going to have column one, and we will pull that back. And we'll have column two, and again, we'll pull this back. And we're going to have to go through some changes here shortly. And we've got column three, and then I'm going to have diagonal one, right? And then we've got the second diagonal. So we should ultimately end up with eight of these statements. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And remember, we're going to have L ifs here. All right, let's sort this out. All right, so the victory four, we're checking here for the first uh, for the first row. If I'm checking the second row, it's going to be uh, what would it be? It would be one zero, and I'm thinking about this in my head. One one, one zero, one one, and one two. And if it is the third row, it would be. 2-2, two, two, and what's that going to be? 2-1, two, 2-1, one, two, one, and 2-0. Two, so the first three statements cover going from left to right or right to left to check to see if we've got uh, all three spaces, all squares, with the same uh, number. So then if we're going down the column, so it would be 0-0, zero, zero, it'll be 1-0, and it'll be 2-0. And remember, the reason that we're passing that sign in is so that we don't have to have two functions to check to see if the computer has one or if the human has one. We just have this one. So here it's going to be 0, 1, and then 1, 1, and then 2, 1. And then finally, we'll have that last column, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. 2, 1, and then it's going to be 0, 2, and then 1, 2, and then 2, 2. There we go. All right, now we've got our two diagonals, which would be 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 2, 2. And then the diagonal coming the other way is going to be, it is actually 0, 2, and then 0, 1. Oh, I'm sorry, 1, 1, 1, 1, and then it would be 2, 0. All right, so now we're checking for whatever sign we pass in, right? Whether it's the human or the computer, which is how we're going to invoke this function, we're going to pass in that single string character, either a capital O or a capital X. Now, We've checked to see if we've got a winner, but if we don't have a winner, then what are we going to say? Well, we could say something along the lines of, we could say print, um, let's see, uh, we don't have a, oops, sorry, we've got the, we, I'll say we do not have a winner yet, play on, or let's say we don't have a winner yet, we'll leave it at that. There we go. All right, so we do not have a winner yet, and that's what that is going to say. So when I go to invoke or call the function, I would say victory four, and I'm gonna pass in the board, and now the sign would be, I would check for the human, and victory four, and we would say board, comma, computer. And so again, when I invoke or call the function, I'm passing in either the variable human, which is the string, capital O, or the variable computer, which references the string, capital X. And we're just going to go through each of the eight possible winning combinations to see if we have a winner. And if we don't have a winner, right, we're just going to print that out. We don't have a winner yet. 
we would continue on. And again, remember in the last video, we're going to kind of clean everything up so that it runs smooth. I'm going to, we're going to drop a lot of this into a while loop for execution. But for right now, let's hit F5 and let's see what we get. If we've got any errors in our code possibly. So I'll choose number nine. And you can see we get the update here. So the O has been placed here. It prints out our tuples. Right, and we notice that 2-2 two, two is gone and 1-1 one, one is not here because those two squares are taken, so that code's working. And you can see we do not have a winner yet, and that gets piped out twice. And so maybe what we would say uh, going into the function, uh, and we could probably do this, right, to make it maybe a little bit more clear. Let me throw a print statement in up here, and let's say this. Let's say print... Uh, checking to see if um, player sign and um, is the winner. All right. So we'll say checking to see if the player with whatever the sign is, is the winner. Uh, and again, what we could do is we could even check and let me see i'm thinking as to whether or not printing this if i want to do this with an if so i was going to do an if but we'll leave it here for right now and let's go ahead and hit f5 and again that core sort of algorithm there we'll say six is oh sorry about that and i think i hit uh Sign is the winner. Let me hit F5. I think I hit the wrong key there. All right, so we'll say six. Make sure we don't have any errors. Okay, we don't have any errors. So checking to see if player O is the winner, we do not have a winner yet. Checking to see if player X is the winner, we do not have a winner yet. Right, and so you can see uh, that we are going to call that twice. And again, I may clean this up and make a little change to it. But for right now, this code looks good. So let's check and see if it can find a winner. So I'm gonna put a capital X there. We've got one in the center and then it would have to be down here at square number nine. And so we've got a diagonal win, right? And you could even maybe put in the print statement up here based off of, you know, hey, the winner, based off of if these matches are true, they're all true, and they all equal the same sign, you might say winner via row one, or winner via left to right diagonal, or right to left diagonal, or column one is the winner. So maybe I'll come back and, and clean that up and spice it up a little bit. But for right now, I think we're good. And again, I've kind of pre-staged this so that we get a winner, so that it's going to check to see... Uh, whether or not we can spot a winner. And so you can see the board, right? You have a winner right now. So I'll pick square three and hit enter. And checking to see if player O is the winner. We don't have a winner yet. Checking to see if player X is the winner. Player X is your winner. And so, again, I'm not going to go through all the possible combinations that we could have we'd be here for oops, sorry be here for a while but you can see that it does capture whether or not we have that diagonal win and it'll do the same thing for the uh vertical and the horizontal wins as well and so right now we're going to be ready for the final function that makes up this activity before we then go into the final video and pull everything together and come up with a really nice looking program. So that is going to do it for this video. Uh, Tic-tac-toe part four, where we're checking to see, did the human win or did the computer win? And this is all part of lab 4.1.6.13, which is the Netacad Introduction to Python course. And it's also the Python Institute's Python course. It's the same, same course. So. All the best to you in your studies out there. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.